setting out once more for Olesund to film beautiful Norway. This time in 4K. Wow. And a little apprehensive. It's Friday and I only have until Monday and Siri tells me I'm getting a narrow window of sunshine. The rain of England soon giving way to the snow of Norway. Norwegian Air is very smart. No free food, but free Wi-Fi. After a two-hour flight, we descend into Alessand. Very happy to be in Norway again, and right on time. My old friend Guna met me, and we were soon on our way to his home in Volda. Our final destination today is Flum, and that's about six hours drive. Just in time for the ferry. Not very busy today. I have to admit, as a tourist anyway, to enjoying the ferry rides, getting a break from the road, getting a coffee, stretching our legs, and even getting a chance to film. Then along the fjords to Volda. The clouds not clearing but with the expectation of sun appearing before nightfall. We made good time to Volda, where we stopped off at Guna's beautiful home for a snack. Volda is a beautiful town in western Norway, and is home as a spectacular view over the fjord and the mountains beyond. This is a traditional Norwegian home, and Gunnar actually built it himself. Norway has severe winters. In summer, it never gets dark. In winter, there's only about six hours of daylight, and it's very cold. Gunnar therefore used timber four inches thick, with insulation and cladding. In Norway, double and even triple glazing completes the job. I really love the way his home is decorated in the traditional style. The lighting and colors are warm. It certainly has a very cozy feel to it. And I can imagine on cold, dark winter nights, it's a great place of refuge. The walls floor, ceiling, and even the doors are all pine wood. Very beautiful. A wood stove on the left of the TV is actually the main source of heating, though Gunnar claimed it was actually the light bulbs. The insulation is so good. So Gunnar prepared a quick snack while I continued to film. The garden was equally beautiful a Norwegian country garden. The views, not only breathtaking, but clear skies, little pollution here. Most of Norway's electricity is produced by rivers and waterfalls, which is clean. We were soon back on our journey to Flum. It's 7.15 in the evening, and it will take us about four hours to reach there. But the good news is that Gunnar has chosen a route for us 
that skirts the fjords. And even at this late hour, I'm able to enjoy the beauty of Norway. It's difficult to imagine that I only left London six hours ago, and here I am, in the middle of June, driving through the Norwegian countryside, snow-capped mountains in the distance, and great views over the fjords. Such a contrast to my home in Hong Kong, where, incidentally, I met Gunnar and his family about 30 years ago. It was a real treat to be in the middle of nature, and we had views like these all the way. Then disaster struck. Just as we were arriving, the barrier for the ferry was coming down and we missed the ferry by 10 seconds. We watched it leave, but decided to make the best of the situation by having a snack. Soon the ferry arrived back and we continued our journey one hour late. By now, the evening mist was floating through the valleys. At midnight, we reached Flom, another great day in Norway. On getting up early next morning, we were greeted by a beautiful sunny day, blue skies, and mist rolling through the valley. Time for breakfast. Outside was an artist's paradise, with the clouds floating through the hills, as though happy to enhance this amazing scenery. I can tell you that the camera in no way does it justice. The hostel has several chalets, each with three or four bedrooms, showers and laundry room below, and lounge, dining room and small kitchen above. We were soon enjoying breakfast that we had bought on the way and a great view out the window. Then the eagerly anticipated and world-renowned mountain railway. Starting point right next to the fjord, the steepest railway in Europe. National Geographic Traveler magazine named it as number six of the best train journeys in Europe. Uh, about to go up on the train up the at Flum and we're going to go up the mountain and uh, this train journey is reputed to be one of the best in the world so we're really looking forward to that. The museum has a video of the trip if you can't make it and there are other attractions and shops there. I still remember the feeling I had looking out the window seeing the cloud in the valley, the sun peeping through above, and knowing this would be special. We're soon on our way. The Flam Railway was built to be a link between the main Oslo-Bergen Railway and the ships that sailed into the fjord. Many tourists still take the Bergen train from Oslo and then do a round trip down to Flam, returning the next day.
an engine at the front and the back, the one in 18 gradient requiring a lot of power. The big attraction is the view out of the window. And as we ascended out of Flum, we were already getting picture book scenery. And the glacial river still snaking its way down. This is the second train of the day and it's relatively empty. When the afternoon cruise ships come in, it's very busy. Every now and then a great plume of water can be seen dancing down the mountainside. It's the land of a million waterfalls and that's just this valley. The only thing that can compare in my experience, was the train ride from Cusco in Peru up to Machu Picchu, when I still remember the only window that we could open was in the toilet. So the photographers congregated there and took turns to shoot. Halfway up, we passed the down train coming down. Then off we go, up, up, up. Troll spotting. Ah, there's his ladder. Above is the railway track that will pass in a few minutes. And then the famous Josephson Waterfall, a free fall of 305 feet. The train stops for five minutes for us to see it, and sisters dance to heavenly music. Wow. After that, the rest of the ride is an anticlimax. Everybody just talks about it. We're nearing the snow line, and it's the 18th of June. These are the mountains that have inspired poets and writers, musicians and philosophers through the ages. finally reach our destination. So what's the verdict? Fantastic! Really simple. I enjoyed it, babe. I think it's worth going. Now the return trip. The good news is that we get to see it all again. This time, it feels better. I'm not frantic to get every shot, and I'm enjoying it. The troll is nowhere to be seen. chatting to the other passengers. This couple actually lives here and were very helpful explaining things to us. For some reason the going down was like 
riding down on a bike after the strain of riding it up. Even Thomas the engine was quiet and relaxed. What a trip. After an hour or so, we arrived back in Flum. The whole trip had taken about two hours. The cruise ships moor up on the fjord about a hundred yards from the train. One of the great joys of the land is its accessibility and a great way to see it is a cruise. Flum is a must-visit place. Gunnar pointed out this boat to me. It's a library. Room for 6,000 books aboard. It visits many remote locations. In addition to the museum and restaurants, there are many shops here. Even a mal. This troll found work as a god. One of the restaurants was formerly a railway carriage. So back to pick up our things and continue the adventure. We wanted to see the church there, but it was being renovated, so we got to see the outside. And a house with a grass roof. Then on to Bergen, a place I've wanted to visit for a long time. It's about a three-hour drive, but in Norway, the, the scenery is always amazing. So it was a very enjoyable three hours. We stopped in Voss for a coffee at the famous Fleischer's Hotel. A beautiful 19th century hotel in the Swiss style with plenty of character and good coffee. Then, on to Bergen. It's early afternoon and we're only halfway through today's adventure. At last I finally get to see Bergen. 
and believe it or not, it's only 2.15 in the afternoon. And already we've had an amazing adventure. And I'm excited to see this famous city, the old part of town, the Brigham, in the distance. Still mainly wooden structures. The harbour with interesting craft. the old city gate and the funicular railway which will later take us up to get the bird's eye view. According to tradition, the city was founded in 1070 by King Olaf, its name meaning the green meadow among the mountains. It was the capital of Norway in the 13th century. It's still among the mountains, but the green meadow is nowhere to be seen. We parked the car in the center of town and began to explore the food area. Usually the markets are much cheaper, but this is a tourist market, so everything more expensive, but sure looks good and tasty. Norway is renowned for its seafood and there's a great selection here but expensive. These plates were around 30 US dollars. It's a very beautiful and interesting place to take a stroll and is certainly a blend of the old and the new. But the funicular railway was beckoning and I was itching to get a view from the top. So we made our way to the entrance and paid $11 for a return ticket to take this ride, which takes three minutes and 20 seconds and goes up a thousand feet. Opened in 1918, it's almost a hundred years old. I was pleased to get the seat with the view, though the sun had disappeared. Great views from the top. One gets a tremendous overview of the city below. It's one of those places where one likes to sit a while, enjoy the moment and meet people, a couple from America. These girls from the Philippines. There are seats and tables at the top from whence we can enjoy the view. The panorama of the city, very impressive. but it's time to return. Smile everybody. Everybody seems to have had a good time. The city has a laid back atmosphere and many 
pavement cafes. A Scottish restaurant serving German food and al fresco Norwegian dining in style right on the harbour. Local food. I decided to take a stroll down the Brigan, a chance to see the place, and the sun was coming out again. The harbour really is an impressive place. Guna told me that in the summer months the visiting boats stretch almost all the way across. The Brigan. What remains of the medieval quays? now a World Heritage Site. As one would expect, the quayside is now the tourist part of town. I wished I had more than five hours here. There's so much to explore. It's already 5.15 and we're getting our last glimpses before getting a quick snack. Many of the buildings are Replacements of the ones that burn down, a common occurrence when the houses are completely made of wood. Bergen is a complete change from the raw nature that Norway serves up as good as any place on earth. The mix of old and new, traditional Norwegian shapes and styles, even the medieval. Giving the visitor great contrast. The cobbled stone streets and wooden houses gives the place a distinctive appearance. And there are plenty of places to eat. So on to one last location. Gamla Bergen, an open air museum that is a reconstruction of a small town that shows what it was like. There are 55 wooden houses dating from the 18th, 19th and 20th centuries when it was Europe's largest wooden city and its steep streets, squares and alleys transport us to times past. We visited after it had closed but normally actors make the museum a stage of what life was like in Bergen a hundred and fifty years ago. What did it look like? What did people talk about? In these beautiful surroundings, the visitor can meet and interact with the people and ask questions. I was sorry to miss that aspect. There's also a restaurant here with a beautiful view. So we continue our day. We woke up this morning in Flam and took the train up the mountain. We then spent five hours in Bergen and now we're completing our day as we travel to Balestrand through some amazing mountain scenery. Guna has chosen a route that takes us alongside the fjords and it's beautiful in the evening sun.
As usual, we need to get the ferry. This time, we're on time. The 30 minute trip gives us time to stretch our legs, enjoy the views, and have a coffee in Gunnar's Cafe. One of the joys of Norwegian travel. I'm not sure local people will agree, but for the tourists, these interludes are delightful. We're soon continuing the journey, and I'm realizing the amount of time and effort Kuna has put into devising a route that is photoscenic. Just wish we had more time. We had a brief stop in Hoyanga. And then continued to Balistrand, where we booked a cabin with a view over the fjord. 11 o'clock at night, we just arrived. Staying in a cabin here, and uh, there's the view. We have uh, just had a, a literal midnight snack because it is just midnight and it is still quite light. This is the view that we are having right now really enjoying this time. We woke up next morning to another sunny day in paradise. Norway hotels can be expensive, but the way around this is a traditional cabin that has become so popular in recent times. After all, the main thing is to have a place to sleep and have a Norwegian breakfast. And places like this are ideal, especially like this one, right in the middle of nature. and having views that money can't buy. And one has to remind oneself, this is not a lake, but the sea. And any minute, an ocean-going liner may pass by. We're in a place called uh, Balistrand. Arrived here last night. The sun rose at 5.30 this morning. It's been a beautiful morning. It's just coming up nine o'clock. We're in a campsite called Chertun, which is right on the edge of the fjord. And uh, Cher means sea. Tun means like a small town. And uh, it's just been a magical morning reminds me of Edward Grieg's morning suite. Just a wonderful Norwegian morning. It costs 350 kroner for the night, which is 45 US dollars. And we're about to get a cup of coffee and breakfast. Breakfast is in the middle of it all. No hotel restaurant walls to spoil the view. And additionally, a Norwegian breakfast, eating local fare, though no groots. This is good. 
I'm quite sure whether Paul likes it yet, but he's a polite guy and he doesn't complain. Yeah, and it, what is it called? Pickled, just pickled herring? It was, we call it sour, sour herring. Okay. It's, it's, it's herring, vinegar, uh, sugar, uh, salt, salt yeah. some onion. And um, it's it's not actually it's raw. It, it's not cooked in a way, so it's it's, it's a raw fish, like in sushi. But, but it's yeah. so. It is absolutely delicious. Beautiful. Camping and motorhomes are welcome here. Ballastrand became a favourite destination in Victorian times as artists painted the amazing scenery and people wanted to visit. And looking around one can see why. We just took time and relaxed after breakfast, enjoying the moment, and then drove into the town. So this is past the famous St. Olive's Anglican Church. And some interesting homes. realizing that it is indeed right on the sea but among the mountains and the harbor was our first point of call the sea the mountains the pretty houses the boats and today the blue skies making it more than live up to its reputation A monument to the North Bergen Steamship Company stands in the harbour. Its boats connected Balestrand to the world in 1858. The boats still come here from Bergen and Flum, and tourists still rate this destination as one of the best in Norway, and no wonder. I have to say that I wished I had more time here, if only just to relax and enjoy the beauty of this place. It's one of those places where one has the urge to sit and soak in the atmosphere. In many places, that's perhaps a historical thing, but here it's simply raw nature. But it's time to move on and we're heading back to Volda. As we left Balestrand, I felt the same way as when we left both Flom and Bergen. I need to stay here for longer. Having said that, Guna had planned a great route, which took us alongside the fjords. One of the joys of traveling in Norway is that even as we're going from one place to another, we still have amazing scenery all the way. Traveling by car also means we can stop and explore whenever we see an interesting place. It was not long before we came to a lookout, quite high in the mountains, 
that gave great views. I scrambled to get a good vantage point. Wow! Looking back, I could see the winding road up which we just traveled and beyond the majestic snow-capped mountains. Yeah, we're up in the mountains and suddenly we have a wall of snow and it is almost July but I can just you know, make a snowball and, you know. Now Norway is renowned for its water and Gunnar demonstrates how clean and tasty it is. Okay Gunnar, what did that taste like? Very similar like water. <laughs> like pure water. Do you like it? What does it taste good. like? There is definitely a hint of goat's pee in there. But otherwise, very nice. And that's what gives it a special flavor. Yeah. This is actually a leisurely trip. We have time to explore. We decided to stop a while at a delightful spot by the river near the waterfall and get a close-up view of the house roofs. A Norwegian who commented on a previous video said the Norwegians call their countryside raw nature and I can't think of a better term. There's something special about the countryside Norway offers. It's like God just made it. There's a peace in this display of unspoiled nature. From Norway, this is normal and here we are in the midst of nature there is no man-made sound whatsoever all we can hear is the sound of the water and occasionally the birds some of those uh, farms up in the field in, in, in the in the mountain they had a cable car so that private cable car it appears this place is a cattle farm, probably mainly dairy cattle. The structure on the hill being the private cable car that Guna was talking about, though it is small, it was the means by which the milk was transported across the river to be picked up by the dairy. If I were to comment on the scenery of Norway, I feel the most remarkable thing is that it's prolific. In many other nations, the presence of a waterfall or scenic view happens once in a while. Here, awesome nature lingers around every corner. And it doesn't matter which side of the car you sit, it's all around. Another notable thing is its sounds. The sound of running water is said to be soothing. Here, it may be a small stream trickling or a powerful river saying, get out of my way. Or as in Flum, millions of gallons cascading over the mountain above and thundering down hundreds of feet as though ecstatic 
at being freed from the ice to dance in the valley below. Here there's a nature trail, Fossestine, 21 kilometers long, following old trails. There are 14 waterfalls and seven lakes along the way, and one can even see a traditional goat farm. I listen to the rhythms of the cascading water, survey the unfolding scene, and run out of words to describe it. Were Shakespeare here, he'd probably invent a word. What can I say? This is amazing. The word I used most on the trip was wow, followed closely by amazing. Consider this was my fifth visit, and I never ceased to be amazed at what it has to offer. The bridge over troubled water gave the opportunity to get a bird's eye view of the falls, both down and up. The old bridge was here. As we left, we followed the river up the mountain before going over to the next fjord. The sunshine and great skies showing it at its best. I'm shooting the journey here because otherwise nobody would believe it's non-stop beauty. It's like watching a travel video from the car window. Guna often providing the commentary. We're passing Skay and the Ton Hotel and we'll soon catch another ferry, another pleasant interlude in Norway. As we continue our journey, we have only half an hour to the Volder Ferry. An amazing journey is coming to an end. Volder on the horizon. Just one more ferry and Guna is home. I have traveled the world, but I have to say that Norway has to be unique and I've only seen a fraction of what it has to offer. I live in a polluted city where tons of toxic pollutants are dumped into our air every day and people suffer the consequences. Here I'm free to breathe fresh air, a freedom that is being eroded the world over. I'm enjoying it. Vol 
Buddha nestled in the fjord among the mountains is a beautiful place and I always enjoy visiting. Indeed, I've spent many memorable hours here walking the town and especially my favorite place, the harbor. The coat of arms is the tip of a pen to signify a long history of education and its ongoing importance here. Volda University College being one of only 25 in Norway is actually renowned for its film animations and even has an annual film festival, though they didn't invite me. I can spend hours here just enjoying the place. It's quiet and peaceful and always something happening on the water. A delightful town, a great community, always a pleasure to visit. From Volda to Olesund is about two hours by bus. I have the front seat, but I've waved farewell to my faithful guide, Guna. It is nonetheless an adventure. Norwegian buses are excellent, and the bus window is still as good as any travel video. The numerous stops clearly shown on the TV even the time it takes to reach there. The bus is remarkably smooth and comfortable. And guess what? I still get to enjoy those enjoyable ferry interludes, even on the bus. Time goes quickly on Norwegian bus trips. The scenery is so spectacular. And I notice on arriving in Olesund that the Queen Elizabeth is also visiting. An impressive sight in the harbor, right next to the bus terminus, and only a five-minute walk to the city centre. This is no ordinary city, designed in the Art Nouveau style, with bronze statues and ornately decorated buildings. The harbour is quite a sight. On the night of the 23rd of January, 1904, this town was the scene of the horrific Olesund fire, which destroyed 800 houses, left 10,000 people homeless and one man dead. Amazingly, within a few years, the town was rebuilt in stone, brick and mortar in the Art Nouveau style colorful buildings and a beautiful harbor. I believe one of the reasons for that is the character and culture of Norwegian people. 
the severe climate and rugged terrain have, over the centuries, molded a people with positive attitudes, persistence, courage, and a resolve to overcome, and not least a generosity toward their fellow men. I believe recent fears of the rise of immigration are not fueled by racism, but by fears that this culture, of which the people are rightly proud, may be eroded. Believe it or not, this is my third visit here, and each time I never have time to do what I want. I want to go up to the hills and view from above the beautiful overview of the city. I want to visit the Jugendstil Art Nouveau Center. I want to take a boat trip, but I only have 25 minutes before I need to catch the bus back to the airport. So all I can do is a harbor walk. Still a very enjoyable thing to do, especially as the sun is still shining despite the weather forecast. Boats have always played an important part in Norway and the fjords and lakes that proliferate mean that most people in Norway are within easy reach of water and boats. Fishing has also been very important. Olesund still is the most important fishing harbour in Norway and the fishing fleet is one of the most modern in the world. In times past, it was one of the main ports for herring fishing, a fact that is clearly obvious from its coat of arms that shows six fishermen on a Viking-style boat catching herring. The town itself is beautiful. The architecture, the way it's laid out, the interesting places and shops, and the cobbled streets, lampposts and trees, and even places where one can sit a while and enjoy a coffee and a snack. The harbour where the ferries come in is on the opposite side to where the big ships dock and is a charming place. So I slowly made my way back to the bus station to pick up my luggage from the locker there and I looked enviously at the Queen Elizabeth. Without doubt, on her way to visit the fjords, Gairanga is not far away, and the Brixdale Glacier. So another visit to Norway comes to a close. A fantastic kaleidoscope of mountains, waterfalls and fjords. A place like nowhere else on earth. And as my plane takes off, I know I shall be back. There's still much to see and explore.
next from exion.org beautiful Norway starting in Horten south of Oslo and going north to Lillehammer Bioli Trollstegen Geiranger Helsilt The Union Hotel Hoye Volde The Fjords Fishing Jostelbreen National Park Brixdel Waterfall And the glacier sailing on the ocean. And finally, a visit to Oslo. <laughs> <laughs> 